Susan and I have just come back from Cyprus. We had a, uh, some wonderful experiences. There's one in particular, very therapeutic, very healing experience I want to talk to you about. Uh, it, it concerns a number of uh, people, and I'll, I'll mention just two. One was a woman with a great deal of problems. The man had a very, very specific problem. So I took them to a very, very, very special place that I had found. Now, on Cyprus, and we were in the Greek-speaking part of Cyprus, there were any number of monasteries, uh, cathedrals, uh, churches, uh, of all shapes and sizes. Uh, and some were, were quite small, and some of them had very, very short little doorways to, to go through. You know, like if you go to the very old buildings in England, how, how short the people must have been? Well, these doorways seemed even shorter. And, um, and, and there was even one that had attached to it what seemed to be an underground burial chamber right, right beside the, the, uh, the sea, which was strange. I think the water would have come in. It was very, very... These were all sorts. Some of them were incredibly beautiful. And, of course, all had icons everywhere. Uh, everywhere icons. And nearly all of them uh, had, um, you know, the usual uh, uh, Greek Orthodox uh, religious paraphernalia, but especially a, 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 a bowl of oil with a little... Uh, candles, little floating candles uh, burning in them, which they would go out and they, you take a, take a bit and you put on any part of your body which is uh, in trouble. So, but I found a very special one. Some of these were quite small, but I found the littlest church. It's so small, it only takes one person. One person. It's right beside the water. Actually, right next door to a naval base. <laughs> it's, it's wide. It stands about, I suppose, about six, seven feet tall. And it has a blue cross on the front, little doorway. And it's uh, sort of, it looks like a large sentry box, like an English sentry box, but bigger. But not that much bigger. And there'd be room for about two people to stand in there which you don't, because it's just one chair, a little small chair. You sit on that, and right in front of you is a little altar with the, with the burning, the candles, and icons around the walls, floor-to-ceiling icons. Even as you approach it, uh, which is virtually through a junkyard, you can feel the energy. And when you're inside, all right, Susan, the energy was just incredible. So I took these two people in particular into there. And afterwards, after just like a minute or two or three, one anointed himself with the oil, one didn't. One was uh, of that religion, one was not. They each made a donation. There's a little uh, box there with, with a lock and key on the bottom of it, um, uh, which I don't think was significant because with that man we had taken to other bigger churches, and he made donations and anointed himself, and there'd be no change. But uh, this one, there was a great change, and they came out completely different. So then we took a few other people in there. Always we got this incredible, incredible change. It was just so much. They came out looking different, walking different. Am I right? Everything was completely changed for the positive. And what I thought was very fascinating about the man is that before I had had him uh, setting up my camera to see if he could feel the energy for when the picture was correctly framed, which he sometimes did, sometimes didn't, after I'd given him quite a bit of, of uh, feedback with it. But after this experience in the church, he was right on. He just set up the camera, looked at it, locked the framing, bang, there it was, high, high energy every time. Complete, as high as we could test 
there he was, there she was, and then later were the others. So what I realized, the first thing was, it's not the size of the church that matters. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> the smaller the church, uh, apparently, the higher the energy. Because there's, I suppose, less ego involved, less whatever it was. It was, you just, it was of womb size. It was, as I spoke to them afterwards, it was like, not before, it was like you went into your mother's womb of love. Now you can, it's easy to imagine, in a way, this being like a womb of love. But it, a cathedral, it's a little bit more difficult. So I, and I said to them afterwards, you've just been in the womb of love. You've been in your mother's womb of love. Now just hold on to that and your lives will be different. And a day or two later, they were still different because they were holding on to that experience. They would have been, if they'd gone to Notre Dame or this cathedral, yes, you, you have an overwhelming experience, but it's not that type of experience. It's not that. They were in her womb of love. It was really, uh, really wondrous. So any time I need to, in my mind now, not that I'm of that religion, that's nothing to do with it. I can go back. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, I'm not one for lighting candles and holy oil and so forth. I'm not particularly one for icons. But the, the feeling in there was just incredible. And I can go back there any time. So we went back to England and I went into a little room not much, not much bigger than that, where this uh, psychic medium we work with, Owen Potts. And you go into his room and all of a sudden, I always know how, how energised I feel there, how peaceful I feel, how loved I feel. Then I realised he has nothing to do with religion in any organised sense of the way. But I realised this too is is a womb of love. You can feel it. So, that room, but especially this little, this little church, this little church, very strong in my mind, very strong in your mind, very extraordinary, made great changes. When we go back there in a year, I, I just intend, I hope, not to give any long seminars, just to take them there, have each of them go in and in turn, stay there as long as their lives, as they like, and afterwards talk to them about her womb of love. Because now they'll know what it feels like. And it reminds me what my mother's <clears throat> spirit has come through many times and talked about. You know, the, the baby being in the womb me being in her womb. And she talks about, here's what she says, the totalness of the spiritual experience. The totalness of the spiritual experience. And that's what I felt in the church. That's what I feel in the psychic's room. And that's what my mother told, tells me I felt inside her. It's all, all healing is to do with her womb of love.